it's amazing to me that we can get mad at our art. I mean, it, I get mad at my art all the time, but it's, it's just incredible when you think about it, isn't it? How is it that when we are creating something from nothing, from the most intimate place at the core of our little being, we can let comparisons and expectations and assessments off of others and off of ourselves and off of our previous work that we somehow, somehow we can make all of that, all of that, which is not present in the room with us while we work, which is not even a ghost of a ghost in reality while we're making the things that we make, we can let it become so real and so powerful that we can actually get mad at our work, at our practice, like angry, real anger. You know, like anger, like the blackest, darkest, most hurtful feeling that we can feel that can drive people to do terrible things, just an absolute in darkenment of the eyes that view this vision that sees everything that is before us and that real anger for our i mean if you're if you're like me for our drawings for our for our bits of of carbon dust on paper it really you know in one sense it kind of highlights um how foolish and ephemeral anger can be that such a anger is one of those feelings that just feels so concrete when you're experiencing it right when you're really feeling anger it, it feels completely justified you know if you're really feeling it it feels as real as anything right there's there's very little impression that anger is unnecessary or an illusion when you're feeling it it feels absolutely needed it's overpowering it's so strong the fact that you can be thrust to such a jagged energetic height as anger by yeah the the illusion of form on paper it just it highlights that anger is um not as concrete as we think uh, it's it's a little silly this is all a little bit silly do you get what i'm saying it's silly that's silly. And like, yeah, I mean like, ha ha, silly. Like, ha ha, aw, bemusing. Like, truly silly. Anger. You know, anger is what you feel about, you know, the loss of a loved one when you shake your fist at the heavens themselves, the indignation at the effrontery that is being in existence. And it's like, that's anger, you know? <laughs> That, that, that emotion, anger is anger, you know? If you're going to feel it in your darkest, most existential despair, you know, that's the same thing that you're feeling when you're peeved that you can't get better at drawing. That's crazy. That's crazy. We really must be more willing to forgive ourselves all of this, really. Of course, that is the key to not getting mad at your own artwork, to not becoming mad at yourself that's really what that is you know you're just turning it all inward all of that frustration and all of that embitterment of course the key is to just forgive yourself just forgive yourself and when you're when you're looking at your work and you're feeling unsatisfied or like you haven't given it your all you haven't done your best look just just look at your work and just see it for what it what it is if it's on a piece of paper in front of you what is it truly look at it just actually look at it for a second look at something that you drew and just look at it it's not critique time it's not time to write some notes about it or Think about if you're going to take a photo of it and put it up somewhere. Just look at it. When's the last time you just looked at your own work? Maybe like the way a viewer would do. How often do you do that? 
I don't do it a lot. If I'm looking at my work, it almost immediately triggers my desire to nervously control things. I immediately get to picking at it, working on it, moving things around, developing things. And the second that I think I'm done, I tend to just put it away. Close the file, slip the piece of paper under another piece of paper. How often do you actually look at what you've made? Maybe look at it like a viewer. I mean, you're expecting people to look at it, aren't you? How long do you spend looking at it? Gaze at your work and ask yourself, what really is it? What are you getting so mad about? If it's a drawing on a piece of paper in front of you, it is just a dust arranged into hazy clouds on the paper, such as to create the illusion of form. And the miracle of drawing, really, is that that illusion can be quite convincing. And for as unreal as it is, it triggers the same illusion in everyone. That's pretty incredible, but that's still all it is. Look at that. All of your judgments and all of the weight that you append to your interpreted successes or failures, where is that coming from? Where is that in the drawing that is before you? It is, of course, nowhere. It's absolutely nowhere. You are adding that. And by you, I mean you with the small y, the small you. I mean the you that judges and analyzes and does the easiest, most uninteresting, most low effort part of the process, which is just adding baseless narratives to what is actually present. The drawing doesn't contain any of your frustrations or your hopes or your successes or your failures or your comparisons or your judgments. Instead, the drawing just sits there as such, as is, perfectly steadily presenting to you what it is. And you add everything else compulsively, habitually, without choosing. And that's important. How much, how long will you let these compulsive contractions of judgment and self-assessment guide your path? How long will you let them throw you around? You can let them throw you around for a whole career, decades. That's quite possible. That's odd. It's the norm. We all do it most of the time, I would say. But it is odd. It's strange how long we let it go unnoticed generally. Your dissatisfaction occasional anger, sometimes hatred for how you're making things and the way things are going. It's compulsive. It's just a spasm, a spasm around just reacting to something that's not there in the work. And we let ourselves think that that is the most energetic part of the practice, that it is those feelings to which we must react just because we feel their sting so intensely. Untrue. Who says? Where's that written? Not at all. That's just the norm, but it doesn't mean that it's right. 
That is not what you have to react to in your practice. You can, in fact, let that go. You can see those judgments, assessments, and analyses for what they are. Not even a dream and mist. Nothing. Sit with them until they lose their energy. And let the space open up. Let the options broaden for what you will react to. And choose something different. Choose something rarer. Choose something more unusual. Choose the less common path. Perhaps decide to react no matter what your drawing is. Decide, choose to react and contract around how amazing it is that you can do it at all and that it sits there so proudly grinning back at you laden with secrets laughing at you for the amount of time that you spend missing it just completely ignoring how odd it is that you get to create that you get to make things Focus on that instead. It doesn't always have to be what you concentrate on. It inevitably won't be. It's not really up to us where our attention goes. But occasionally, with a little bit of focus, we can make it likely that we will spend a little longer gazing into those depths instead. And those depths can be glowing wells of light instead of bubbling pits of sticky black tar. Thanks for drawing today.